I get why atheists are so fatalistic. We have ironclad, knockdown, drag out, logically sound, mathematically provable arguments. We have a five century unbroken streak of scientific discoveries on our side. We have guilt free sex of a thousand flavors and count again yet. Better than four out of five Americans still believe in God. With numbers like that, our failure can seem inevitable. It's very unlikely, after all, that we're going to come up with, you know, a new and even more convincing argument that there's no God. It's hard to imagine a scientific discovery that's going to more overturn religious thinking than evolution. And even if we found one, they would just pretend it didn't exist. When the other guy's ultimate authority is the very thing you're trying to convince them is non-existent, the task can seem an awful lot like trying to stand on your own shoulders. And that leads to a lot of defeatist thinking, which I hear constantly. It's usually preceded by the words, I'm an atheist too, but, followed by some despondent surrender to the inexorable march of faith. But to get there, you have to buy into two lies the apologists try to sell you, and they're baked so deep into our culture that it's easy to overlook the fact that they're even arguments to begin with. The first is that people are naturally religious, and the second is that religion serves a purpose. Now, as to what humans tend towards, yes, there's ample psychological evidence to suggest that humans are predisposed to religious thinking. If some kids somehow could grow up with no cultural influences at all, odds are that they'd create some form of religion. It would be a novel form of religion, right? They wouldn't come up with Christianity. It probably wouldn't be something that they could be reconciled with any existing religion. But based on what we know of human nature, they'd probably come up with some concept of God or gods and some concept of spirit. Right. And, and sure, something that we just naturally do can seem inevitable, but humans are also naturally naked. Humans are naturally afraid of the basement. Humans are naturally ignorant of the theory of relativity. Pretty much all of learning is training ourselves out of our natural tendencies. So why should one of them feel inevitable? The argument that religion serves some kind of purpose is harder to dismiss, I guess, but only to the degree that it's less precise. There doesn't seem to be a hell of a lot of agreement on what that purpose is. Now, don't get me wrong. We do know what, you know, actual purpose religion serves. It outgroups, right? That's the evolutionary pressure for which it was selected. It encourages cooperation with your group and justifies violence against everyone else. And that offers a survival advantage, right? But religious apologists won't even admit that, let alone argue it. So the, the purposes they always offer up are either demonstrably incorrect i.e. it makes you more moral, less likely to sin, more charitable, etc., or they're too vague to measure. It makes you happy. It brings you enlightenment. It fills a God-shaped hole in your heart. But despite those flawed assumptions, atheists find it really easy to buy into the inevitability of religion. Now, to be honest, I think at least some of this is motivated by the fact that it gives people an excuse not to do anything, right? If religion is an unavoidable byproduct of human nature— then there's no moral imperative to do anything to counter it, no matter how glaring its abuses become. But some of it, too, is born of observation. Like, obviously, America has become less religious in the last 20 years, and if you've been alive in America in the last 20 years, you probably noticed. But at the same time, we've seen this massive uptick on, you know, natural crystal vibration, color-infused, one-with-nature spiritualism. So even from within movement atheism, it can still seem like, you know, the second we squeezed a little religion out of society, a bunch of new bullshit rushed in to fill the vacuum. But that's also incorrect. I mean, sure, sometimes the vague category of spiritual can be a stepping stone out of organized religion, but it's unsustainable. Unlike religion, spiritualism doesn't have apologetics. It doesn't have a wealth of literature designed to circumvent logic and hold you to it. It doesn't have billion-dollar hierarchies that exist entirely to keep you fooled. And in most instances, it doesn't have, like, you know, weekly reinforcement and contingent communities, right? Like, yes, a, a community might rise up around a spiritual practice, but it's very unlikely that the community will resort to shunning if one person starts to question their ability to resonate with the universe, in fact, survey data outright refutes the idea that spirituality is rushing in to fill the vacuum. According to recent numbers from Pew, the percentage of Americans identifying as spiritual but not religious is about 22%. Yes, that's a depressingly huge percent. But six years ago, that number was 27%. 
When you look at the numbers over time, the number of religious people and the number of spiritual people are on the decline. And at least over the last few years, the decline in spirituality has been steeper. Now, the obvious caveat here is that spiritual doesn't have an exact meaning. Most people who call themselves religious also call themselves spiritual. A lot of overlap. And if you ask a thousand spiritual people what it means to be spiritual, you'd get a thousand answers. Right. Pew didn't even bother to try to define it. They just asked people, are you spiritual and are you religious? And this decline shouldn't shock anybody either. Right. The antidote to religion and the antidote to spirituality are the same fucking thing. Reason. You know, not everybody leaves their religion because they logic to their way out of it. Some people just, you know, don't feel like they belong or they're disillusioned by all the rape scandals or they just don't like waking up on Sundays or whatever. But people who divorce religion on rational grounds aren't looking for a thing to replace it with. If anything, the process of shedding their religion has given them new defenses against the next person that tries to sell them a load of bullshit. But none of that even matters, right? Because the people who are challenging the mission here are talking to refutations of their argument. As often as not, they are refutations. Because if religion was inevitable, you couldn't exist. <laughs>